celebrate the magnificence of your presence be glorified this frail and incapacitated humanity less of us every day but greater glory for you let it be so we thank you for the church. Thank you for Pastor Lee. Thank you for the first family. Thank you for Pastor Gary. Thank you for your presence among us. We declare wholeness. We declare healing. We declare victory. We declare outgrowth. We declare overcoming. We declare your favor. Amazing God. Amazing grace. Amazing season. Amazing God. Amazing grace. This is an amazing season. Amazing God. Amazing grace. Thank you for an amazing season. For this we give you glory and honor. God give us preaching mercy. Pardon us, pardon us, pardon us. And do have your way. These favors we ask in your name and for your sake. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen and amen. Before you take your seat, just a moment. We thank God for Superintendent Lee in his absence and to all of the saints. Amen. Amen. So glad to see my South Carolina church family. I am a member of the Mason Temple Church of God in Christ. Thank God for Pastor Gary. Amen. And Lady Kim, before you take your seat, look your neighbor straight in the face. Look him in the face. Look them in the eye and whisper at them. Tell them 
it shall come to pass. Now give God a praise right where you stand. Come on, praise God like you believe what you just said. It will come to pass. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It will come to pass. Come on, let it catch like fire. It will come to pass. It's going to happen. Oh, I believe God. You may be seated if you can. Brother Gary, it's going to come to pass. The devil is defeated. Oh! Woo! I don't know about you, but I've got the victory. I'm starting to smell like victory. Oh, my, my. anointing up in here there's a miracle walking the aisle right now look down the road and say get ready I believe him. Yeah. Now I'm a real Pentecostal preacher. I'll let you praise God. I won't stop you. I'll let you praise your weave out.
bless you to Pastor Gary Lee who has presented us men somebody shout spirit is life Taking me a minute to understand that flesh is not life. Somebody say it again, spirit is life. Though this outer man perish away, the inner man is renewed day by day. Somebody say spirit is life. I look at your neighbor and say live. My back hurt. Somebody say, spirit is life. My leg is giving away. Somebody say, spirit is life. What's up? To Pastor Gary, to all of the officials of the church, I consider it an honor to be here today. And I thank God for the privilege to fellowship and to be with my family and people of God. So good to see all of you today. Amen. Two weeks ago I was coming uh, um, on the plane. You always got to pray when you come Spirit Airlines. <laughs> but it's the fastest way to Myrtle Beach. <laughs> the Lord inspired me when I was on my way. I didn't know what it was for. And I picked up one of them barf bags. And 
started scribbling my thoughts on one of those in case you have a problem bag. <laughs> then I reached for my wife's bag because I had used both sides of the bag and I needed a portion of her bag to retain what the Spirit had said. Um, for about 15 minutes today, uh, let's consider the house of Mary, the mother of John. Yeah. The first century war room. Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Indulge me, verse 5 as well. Now, about the time of Herod the king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. Certain of the church. Somebody say certain of the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Another version says, but consistent prayer was offered to God for him by the church. In these next 14 minutes, I want to attempt to talk about spirit war. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is war. Now grab your neighbor by the hand. I'm going to grab your neighbor by the hand talk to your neighbor preacher. Yeah, grab him by the hand and, and say, neighbor. neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. I'm, in I'm in this fight with you. Now clap those same hands and give God praise. We, 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 we live in what I call an extraordinary time of change, shifting and trending. Change and relevance church has become I believe one of the primary challenges of the church in ministry, especially to this era that has distanced itself from faith and the necessity of an actual authentic life with God. Uh, there is an increased carnal noise, if you will, encroaching upon the kingdom a glaring enticement of the anointed to forsake our responsibility in practice or orthopraxis uh, to God in spirit and in truth. So in this season, the Lord calls you and I, us church folk, to clarity. Uh, there is a deceptive spirit uh, that is ideologically splitting hairs for the sake of personal rhetorical right. Uh, a right to debate, a right to be right, and a right to undo historical and traditional truths. Creating what I call uh, uh, the lesser of God ideology. 
Uh, this idea, church, is not the total dismissal of God, but an ideology that suggests that we don't need that much of him. Uh, in suggestion, um, it calls the church to pray less. It calls the church to praise less. Don't shout that long. It calls the church to gather less. Uh, it is the idea that we don't need to do all of that. And this lesser of God idea is seeping uh, it's leakage into uh, the foundation of our Christian theism, leaving the church less spiritual. I did not say that we were unspiritual, but is leaving the church less spiritual. And the church is now experiencing a sequential seasons of distractions as conquests. Uh, as warfare. Uh, these are cryptic uh, distractions, uh, satanic uh, deflections as strategy of the devil uh, for present day spiritual warring. Many of the things that we are suffering today in the church is really the result of this cryptic spiritual warring by the devil. The devil is at war with God's church. And this has become an old fashioned idea. Uh, this warfare um, has intent to displace what I call of the timing of the church in the kingdom. Uh, it is a warfare with intent to displace the church in her responsibility uh, to be at the place where divine destiny and our purpose meets God. So, 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 so we have no time to waste. This is no time for church attitudes. This is no time for going down the third aisle because you want to speak to Sister uh, 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 Cornhead in aisle one. Um, now this is not the time. We have no years to give to the devil. Uh, we have no seasons to lose uh, to carnal adventure or, 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 or carnal ambition. Um, we have no time uh, for pleasure breaks. Uh, there is a war going on. And God has need of you. Lay your hands on somebody and say, right now. I'm almost finished preaching. Um, these, 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 these interruptions, uh, uh, they are distractions in sequence. They are distractions in sequence, one after another. Uh, the Trump distraction is an evil spirit. Yeah, historically, we have seen this spirit before. Look, somebody say, nothing new. We defeated it then, and we'll defeat it now. Oh, y'all not hearing me here. All right, it's just a spirit. I wish I had a witness here. Uh, um, it's not exclusively Trump, uh, but a spirit of darkness, a spirit of hatred of the, that comes from the pits of hell. Well, these distractions, church, um, uh, they are designed uh, to interrupt the progress um, the, of outgrowth um, the, of the church. Um, the, it is meant to break what I call um, the spiritual rhythm of the church uh, in function. Uh, the church must be cyclical in its movement. Uh, the weekday service got to be connected to the choir rehearsal. The choir rehearsal's got to be connected to the prayer meeting. The prayer meeting has got to be connected to the missionary circle. Oh, you know, everything has got to be in rhythm. Oh, bless the name of God. So we are cautioned. We are cautioned not to be distracted in this era. Somebody say, I am not distracted. We are cautioned not to abandon uh, the fundamental biblical truth of scripture concerning our life for him. Uh, we are admonished, I admonish you uh, to take God at his word. Uh, somebody repeat after me and say, Pastor, I believe God. 
it's important to remember uh, th that we are as much spirit uh, as we are flesh. <laughs> we are as much spirit uh, as we are flesh. And this warfare is not pragmatic alone. Um, the warfare is not about personal uh, distaste for someone else. Well, this warfare is deeply rooted in the spirit. I'm almost there. It's deeply rooted uh, uh, in, in, in dark principalities. Uh, I believe that Paul said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, um, but against principalities, um, against powers, um, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, um, against spiritual wickedness um, in high places. Well, this season Mason Temple um, uh, is calling for the church um, uh, to be spiritual uh, uh, spirit uh, is not flesh in mission uh, uh, to be spiritual in the flesh um, will require a self mandate of sacrifice um, uh, I'm going to prayer even when I don't feel like going uh, I know I work two shifts today uh, but I will not miss my devotion. Uh, you've got to be determined uh, that you're going to be in touch with God uh, in this season. Uh, well, it calls for um, um, a self-imposed uh, obligation uh, to please God. I get up in the morning with the mindset to praise God. I'm going to shift this in a minute. Uh, I get up in the morning with my mind on him. Uh, I get up in the morning looking up and saying, God, I bless you for another day. Uh, I recognize I only get one day at a time. And by the grace of God, I got another one. Uh, I got another day. So I wake up in the morning with praises in my mouth. Uh, I can hear the birds singing. Uh, so I join the birds choir. Uh, and I give God a praise. Uh, I can hear the rooster crowing. Uh, oh my God. So I join the rooster. Uh, and I give God praise. Uh, I can see the flowers uh, uh, rising in the morning. Uh, so I rise in the morning with the flowers uh, and I give God praise. Uh, oh, there's dew in the morning. Uh, no rain, but the grass is wet. Uh, I get up in the morning uh, and I give God his praise. Uh, I did all that to say that if I praise him or not, the dew will praise him. Uh, my God, the rooster will cock-a-doodle-doo. My God, you're not hearing me here. I don't have to open my mouth. Oh, bless the name of God. As much as our, our increase intellectualism is a blessing today, it has its shortcomings. There are traditional spiritual practices of the church that should never be moved as I close. It is important that we do not blend into an over-intellectualized religious practice at the cost of spiritual power. We must beware of carnal and powerless cycles. We must at all times be able to respond to the darkness we must be able to respond to the enemy's attack in the power of the Holy Ghost at all times. Uh, so the church and the anointed uh, must heighten, we must heighten our awareness of God um, and the power of his ableness um, who actually keeps us from falling. So I declare that our God is able. Uh, I come here to remind every one of us uh, that our God is in full capacity that our God is able uh, and we might be going through our personal trials uh, and our tribulations uh, but I come to let you know that our God is able uh, my God Paul said I have suffered uh, of the loss of all things um, uh, and I count them but dumb uh, that I might gain Christ and be found in him uh, he said having my own righteousness 
but that I may know him and, uh, and, and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Well, I come to let you know that I am willing to suffer, uh, that I might know him. Uh, I am willing to stay up all night, uh, that I might know him. Uh, I'm willing to let you talk about me uh, and not say anything back, uh, that I might know him uh, and I might know him and uh, the power of his resurrection uh, because we, we must be able, uh, we must have power uh, to push back against the attack uh, of the devil. Uh, in this season, uh, it is critical uh, that we war for our homes, uh, that we go to war for our children, uh, that we go to war for our pastor, uh, that we go for war uh, for the will of God. Jesus says, I will give you, uh, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. Uh, and whatsoever you bind on earth, uh, I will bind it in heaven. Uh, said, what you loose on earth, um, said, I'll loose it in heaven. Uh, he's given us power to bind and to loose, to loose and to bind, to bind and to loose, to loose and to bind, to bind and to loose, to loose and to bind. God's not going to do it uh, until we do it. Uh, he said, if you bind it down here, he said, I'll bind it up there. If you loose it down, you're not hearing me. I'll loose it down here. Tell somebody it's time to fight back. Tell somebody it's time to fight back. Somebody say, loose sickness. Loose cancer. Let us go. Free us. We bind the devil everywhere. Clap your hands and give him glory. Here's my last point. The enemy church is deliberate in his conquest. He would have us war in the flesh. The devil is specific in the, in the strategy of his attack. Please let me expose him. Our text says that the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. Not just anybody. Uh, he had already killed James, the brother of John. And because it would please the Jews, he gave target to Peter. And many of you are under attack because you are certain. Uh, my, 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 my. You want a reason? I just gave you one. You are under attack, my God. Your body is under attack. Your children is under attack. Your money is under attack yeah, because you are certain. Somebody say, preach, bro. My, 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 my. You are certain of the church. You are under threat because you are anointed. Uh, you are under attack because you are faithful. Uh, you're under attack because uh, you stand with the man of God. Uh, you're under attack uh, because your enemies hate you. Uh, my God, the enemy will attack you just to please your enemies. Uh, but tell somebody, uh, you cannot fail on my watch. Come on, tell somebody, you cannot fail on my watch. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you cannot fail on my watch. Whisper at somebody and say, you will survive in this season. So it's important to understand as I close our biblical responsibility uh, to be spiritual. Shouting is not spiritual. The church must be spiritual uh, in this era. And too much is getting between us. And remember, we are as much spirit as we are flesh. My, my, my. Uh, the flesh don't want you to remember that. 
He don't want you to remember that there's a spirit living on the inside of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Somebody say spirit is life. Oh, I wish somebody understood what I'm saying. I'm out of the spirit is life. Uh, my God, I've been dragging this leg for 50 years, but my spirit is alive. Oh, y'all not hearing me. Diabetic 40 years, but my spirit is alive. Oh, y'all not hearing me. And I can give God glory dragging this leg. I can give God glory taking an insulin shot. Oh, y'all not hearing me. Somebody say spirit. Spirit is life. We must say, watch me live. We shall live and not die. I come to declare it in this house. We shall live and not die. We shall live and not die. Oh, we shall live. season uh, I got to quit Gary I got to quit we must take responsibility for each other in the spirit so elder Gary I got your back in the spirit ah first lady Kim first lady and lady Kim I got you I got your back in travail look at your neighbor and say neighbor I got your back come on I got your back I, come on come on come on say, say I got your back we just don't come to church on Sunday together. We are a faith community. If you sick, it makes me pray. You get in trouble, it makes me go to the war room. Oh, y'all not hearing me here. They lock you up, I won't stop praying. You get a bad diagnosis, I believe God. Because spirit is life. Somebody say spirit is life. Spirit is life. Spirit is life. Somebody say live. Don't die. Somebody say yeah. Let me close with my final point. And I'll touch the text. God has given us power over the enemy. Let me say it again, because some of y'all should have been shouting. I'll say it one more time. I'll turn my back this time. God has given us power over the enemy. He said, I give you the key. Shout, I got the key. Uh -huh. Somebody say, I got the key. Come on, I got the key. Yeah. So, I need you to be careful in this season. I need you to be careful how you fight. Yeah, yeah. I need you to be careful how you fight in this season. See, it's become old fashioned to plead the blood. Deke, your generation, you heard your mom and all of them, they were always pleading the blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood of loose here. Some of you ain't even heard that, loose here. The blood of Jesus, the blood, they put the blood on everything. They put the blood, we don't, we, we don't plead the blood anymore. All right, all right, all right. But they knew how to fight. And they knew what to fight. Uh-huh. They didn't just know how to fight, Elder Will, but they knew what to fight. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So we have made, we have made pragmatic the things of the spirit. The spirit is not pragmatic. Yeah. yeah. God is not a man. And the things of God is spirit. It's a very pragmatic Christian era. 
God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible said John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Yeah, yeah. And the hand of the Lord came upon Ezekiel and set him down uh, in the spirit in, 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 in a valley full of bones. Uh, and said, this is the word of the Lord that came to Zerubbabel. He said, yeah, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. I want to let you know you are lethal. You are a threat to the devil when you know how to fight in the spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are not my enemy, but I bind that spirit. I bind that spirit that makes you want to not speak to me. I burn that spirit that makes you want to gossip and talk about my husband. I burn that spirit. And when I burn down here, God's going to burn it up there. I burn the spirit of sickness. I burn the spirit of illness. I burn the spirit of cancer. Tries to interrupt the will of God. Look, I say, I advise you. I'm about done. I'm about done. I'm about done. I want you to leave here with something. God been messing with me that so you've become too sophisticated, bro, with your seminary in self. My God, he said, all that is nice, but sometimes you just got to whip the devil's butt. You got to push. You got to push the devil back. Anybody here know how to push the devil back? When he wants to make you cry, when he wants to make you depressed, say, I refuse to cry. I resist that spirit. I'm gonna give God the praise. I'm gonna give God uh, my, 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 my. I am not down. I am up. Somebody say, push him back. I'm dead by there, bro, Gary. Lenny Brock, I turned 60 this year. I either got too old or too fat to preach as hard as I used to. I'm not sure which one it is, but I promised God I wouldn't stop preaching. Are y'all not hearing me here? Oh, bless the name of our God. Somebody say, push him back. explain to you why familiar spirits stay in the church. God gave me this because I got this thing that's been repeating for more than three decades and I thought it was people. In my pastoral sophistication I do what I had to do to arrest them and call myself getting them straight. Six months later, different face, same spirit. The devil just keeps sending them. And the Lord said, the problem is here, you're fighting people. <laughs> Rather than old timers, they fought spirits. They didn't let every spirit crawl up in the church, uncontested. It's a very demographic and politically correct society, but in the church, you gotta bind that spirit. So no, 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 you can stay here, but not with that spirit. 
No, no, you want to hear the gospel is a good place for you, but that spirit cannot live here. Oh, you're not, I feel you're pushing back on me. I got a gift now. I get, don't push, no, no, that spirit cannot live here. It'll mess up our children. It'll mess up the next generation. We drive that spirit out of here. You're an attention hog. You're an attention hog. No, 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 no. We don't want that spirit on our children. We want our children to have a humble spirit. You know, we drive that spirit out. We drive it out. We drive it out. Look at somebody say, this is war. So I had to learn, I don't want your membership that bad. So I got a few empty seats, but the ones that are in the seats, they're connected. I'm preaching up in here, I am, I am preaching. I'm leaving, bye-bye. You and that spirit, I cast you out. Trying to tear the church up. Trying to run the pastor down. Trying to talk about the pastor's family. I cast you out of here. Tell somebody it's a spirit. And if you cast the spirit out, there won't be another person coming in with a different face and the same spirit. So pastor, what is the spirit? I, I'm done, I am. This is my working definition for spirit. I said, God, I need to understand what a spirit is. Yeah. A spirit, because we are as much spirit as we are flesh. You don't leave with anything else, leave with that. I'm as much spirit as I am flesh. That's another sermon at another time. And how the flesh is always at war. And the only way the spirit becomes preeminent is if you bind the flesh. Fasting quiets the noise of the flesh. That's why the devil don't want you to fast. Prayer quiets the noise of the flesh. That's why you get, ah, I'm so tired I can't go to prayer. That's why you don't want to go to prayer. Because the flesh said, don't go, I want to be noisy. But you are lethal. You are dangerous. When you know how to war in the spirit. You ain't prophesying in the parking lot either. Oh, y'all not hearing me. You ain't got a word for somebody every time you see him either. But you know how to war. God, I war for my children. Oh, God, breathe on them. When they're sleeping at night, you walk past their bedroom talking about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Cover my son. The blood of Jesus. He will be great. The blood of Jesus. Touch his mind. The blood of Jesus. God sent an angel. The blood of Jesus. You know how to war. You know how to war for that husband. God, keep him strong. Oh, God. You know I love my husband. God, breathe on him life. Breathe on him while he's resting. You lay your hands on him while you're laying next to him. You never open your mouth. You just put your hand on him and you say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. Oh, oh, help I know. I wish I had some warriors up in here. Lying. That is not warfare. Oh, but I wish somebody knew how to pray. The devil's trying to dismantle the church in function. We're becoming sensationalized. Yeah. We want to be entertained. Yeah. And we're losing our power. I haven't lost my place. 
we're losing our power. A spirit. You ready for this? A spirit is a non-tangible influence that affects the behavior of people to work against the spirit of righteousness and the will of God. Let me do it again. A spirit is a non-tangible influence that affects the behavior of people to work against the spirit of righteousness and the will of God. Now declare with me and say, it's a spirit. Now, God has given us power, and I'm going to rehearse the text, to fight back in the spirit and to overcome the evil one. He has given us power to bind every dark situation. He has given us power to be loosed from every stronghold. I give you the keys. Said I ain't loosing nothing until you loose it. You want it tied up, you tie it up. And I'll tie it up in heaven. Oh, that blesses me. I've been empowered. You've been empowered to bind that spirit. Good God. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Sometimes your children come home with spirits. That ain't my spirit. And that spirit don't fit in my house. I wish I had some mamas and daddies up in here. I got a house full of kids. I got kids that said, uh-uh, 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 that's a spirit. And I drive that spirit up out of here. And wherever you were, you stayed there too long. Now they will have us fighting with one another. And it's not the person, necessarily. It's a spirit. That sounds a little spooky, I know. 21st century, that's spooky. But it's a spirit. When Jesus went to cast out the demon, he said, what is your name? <laughs> that my name is Legion. Oh, y'all not hearing me here. If you stay with the book, you're all right. If you stay with the book, you're all right. I'm not making up nothing. Jesus said, no, 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 I see the man, but I want to know what your name is. Oh, y'all not hearing me here. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know the maniac, the maniac that was, that was hanging out in the graveyard? He had a spirit on him. Oh my God, and every now and then he would, he would lose his mind and want to cut himself and, and yeah, 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 but Jesus came to town. And something down on the inside of him said, how did he do that? Because he is as much spirit as he is flesh. My God, he fell at the feet of Jesus. So we've got this power, and I close. I really do close. The church again must master the dualism of our existence with God. I think Paul says it like this, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So flesh ain't got no business fighting flesh. Look at somebody say, no church fighting up in here. If we're going to war, we're going to war in the spirit. So for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, in every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So the church must design 
The church, let me say it like this. The church was designed by God to be communal. It's supposed to be a community. That's why we gather in the name of the Lord. We have shared values. That makes us community. Always look out for the Lone Ranger. We're community. Let me touch this text. And I want to call an altar call. Because the enemy doesn't want us to believe that we need each other. Six and a half years ago, seven years ago, my 18-year-old son going to his freshman year or sophomore year of college and he had a little knot on his neck and it wouldn't go away. Just a little bump, just a little, bump, just a little thing. 19. What can be wrong with a 19-year-old? And his skin started getting dark. He started looking strange. So we had an old Jewish doctor. And he had just turned 18, so he was out of pediatrics. I took him to the doctor. The doctor gave him a thorough, a thorough physical. And he did his blood work. He said, I want him to go see an oncologist. I said, what did you say? He says, it's nothing, I just don't like this number. I just want him to go see. Went to the oncologist, the doctor checked him. There was nothing. He didn't see anything. Six months later, this little bump showed up in his neck. We took him back to the doctor. And to the ear, nose, and throat, he went down his throat. He says, Reverend, I don't see nothing. But I'm looking at something. Said, let me take a biopsy. He's 18 and a half. I'll tell you about warfare. He sticks that big needle in his neck twice. And it comes back from pathology. Nothing. He says, this keeps telling me that there's nothing and I'm looking at something. There's some pretty good doctors out there. He did everything he was supposed to do except for take it out. He says, Reverend, whatever that is, just let me take it out. So there's 18, doc, you can't be cutting his throat like that. He says, let me take it out. I said, well, he goes to school in September. He says, okay, I want to take it out in July. He opens it up, takes it out, sends it to pass out, to, uh, to, to pass out and it comes back Hodgkin's lymphoma, 18. That moment changed my entire life. Everything in my life went Everything changed. But I did the scans, he had Hodgkin's all in the back of his heart, in the stomach, in his neck. I said, now what are you going to do here? Because he was watching me. I am his father. Y'all not hearing me here. So woman of God, I couldn't flinch. I'm standing there and said, he said, dad, what's Hodgkin's lymphoma? I says, uh, son, it's a type of cancer, but I think you're going to be all right. And the doctor told him, well, it's a good kind of cancer. CJ said, you know, I'm only 18, but I'm pretty smart. There's no good cancer. He said, ain't, this ain't no good cancer, but you mean cancer. I said, son, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. I had to learn how to stand straight up in front of him. They sent him to this PhD, MD, Asian kind of doctor. He was a real good guy. I just didn't like him. I didn't like him, but he was, he was a good doctor. But he had to deal with me, not an 18-year-old. 
you're not here. I'm talking about warfare. I'm talking about warfare. I'm talking about real warfare. My son is 25 now, turning 26. But I'll give you that in a minute. And, and I said, oh my God. And he said, well, we want to start chemotherapy right away. I said, what? He said, we have to start chemotherapy right away. The first thing I did, I did what they did in Mary's house. I didn't lose my place. I called 10 people around the country. Pastor Lee was the first person I called. I said, my 18-year-old son, my only, I only got one son, my only begotten son has cancer. I said, Lee, I need you to pray. I called Joe Hargo. I called Rita Womack. I called Richard Garner. I called my brother Larry. There were about four or five people I called. I said, I don't want any sympathy. I said, I just need you to promise me that you won't let a day go by. Oh, you're not hearing me good. All right, all right, because we roll over, we roll over, and God said, you can't roll over, he's watching you. Oh, you're not hearing me here. And every day the Lord gave me this. He says, every day text him and tell him that he is the Lord God that healeth you. Every day I would send him a text. The doctors instructed him to come out of school. He looked at Lady Carol and said, he said, Ma, I don't want to come out of school. She said, no problem. So I'll pick you up for your therapy. You can stay home till you're rested and I'll take you back to the door. He did that for a year. He took those, he took those treatments and the doctor wanted to do it at least another year and a half. And the spirit told me to tell him, says, give him another scan. He says, no, no, it's too early. I said, doc, give him another scan. Give him another scan. He, he has four more treatments. I said, doc, I'm paying for this. Give him another scan. You're not hearing me here. Somebody said, you gotta push back. He put in the pre-work for the scan. He went in the following week and took the scan. Came back for his appointment one week later. The doctor read the report in front of us. He said, youth is a wonderful thing. I looked at that little Asian guy and said, God is amazing, isn't he? God is amazing. He's now 26 years old, six years cancer free, 305 pounds too big, but he's better than he's ever been. Cancer will never touch his body again. I declare it so. Look at somebody and say, this is war. Say, I'm in this fight with you. Brother John, I'm in this fight with you. My God, my God, I'm in this fight with you, Pastor. I'm in this, oh, my, 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 my. I'm in this fight with you. They were going to kill Peter to please his enemies. saw that it pleased the Jews so he said let's kill Peter too oh my God but prayer look at what I say the first century prayer room they were in Mary's house to stop praying. They prayed until God sent an angel. Just like he did to oncology. God 
God will send an angel. Oh my, 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 my. God will send an angel. Somebody pray for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed for me. Says, I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. Ah, I'm so glad they prayed. They prayed for me. My mama prayed. My daddy prayed. Lay your hands on somebody and say, pray for me. Pray for me. you to stand to your feet everywhere. <laughs> Repeat after me and say, this is war. The church cannot lose its ability to push back. I told you a true story. I cried every single day, but never in the presence of my son. Sometimes I would come totally unglued. And God gave me somebody, Elder Tawan Davis, my good friend. I was in the middle of a major church project. He was my lunch buddy. I'd go to lunch all the time. And I could just come unglued with him. I said, if something happens to him, I am done. I said, I quit. I says, I'm done. He said, Spro, God ain't going to do that. He said, God's going to hear us. God's going to hear us. Because I knew that he was under attack because of who I was. Oh, y'all not hearing me here. Some of our minds are too small. And this is why the first family has to be insulated. All right. You got, you got this new thing in, in, in the church today. We want the first family to be common. To be common. And they should, they're regular people. We have wonderful first family here. But they need to be insulated with people who will pray for them. Oh, y'all not liking me. Y'all not liking me. Don't make me walk. Don't make me walk. Because we don't believe in warfare like that until it's hit our home. Certain of the church was vexed. He doesn't randomly attack anybody. He goes for the certain of the church. And that's why the certain of the church must be protected in prayer. Don't ever get that comfortable. Don't ever get that coming. Because if he can dismantle those that God has placed in spiritual authority, he can break the rhythm of the church in function. In Mason Temple, we are a blessed people with blessed leadership. Take it for granted. Everybody's church doesn't look like this. Everybody's church isn't comfortable like this. Everybody's church doesn't minister to everybody. Anybody can come here. Anybody. Degree, under degree, construction worker, PhD teacher, lawyer, doesn't matter, come on. The ministry for everybody. I hope the message today has charged you to believe in miracles. To take your responsibility in the warfare. Stop whining and push back. Be spiritual. Stop prophesying and pray. I've never seen so many prophets in my life. Die, 
time to pray. We are as much spirit as we are flesh. I'm approaching the zone, Elder Will. Pastor Larry, I call it the zone. You get to be about 55, 60. You're in the zone. You're in the zone. Some of the brothers know what that is. That's called the heart attack zone, the stroke zone, the prostate zone, the kidney zone. You're in that zone. If you do well up there, you're good. And if you get past that, you know, but the body just start doing what it does. This is new for me, so I'm trying to figure all of that out, dig. I'm trying to figure, I gotta lose some weight, I gotta do some stuff. I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna get it done. That's my responsibility. Yeah, that's my responsibility. Then I do mine, then God will do what he gotta do. Yeah, I, I get all of that. I get all of that. So, but you're in the zone. And when you realize you're in the zone, you realize that there is this mindset of knowing how to war. Because I always have to remind myself that I am as much spirit.